What was it doing? It's just a little. <laughs> got a little. It's just hanging. <laughs> Hi, I'm Luke, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the five tips that uh, we think are most important if you're starting or getting into e and setting up an e-commerce store. Um, so whether you're a business that already has an e-commerce store, whether you're looking at doing it, or whether you're a bricks and mortar store that is looking to go online, hopefully there'll be something in this video for you. So point number one, building the website. Look. We've obviously done this for a number of years now, and one of the most important things is, is to get the, the foundation right, and that is the building of the website. Um, now, not all e-commerce platforms are made equal. There are a lot of older platforms, which are probably, you know, they, we, we still see some clients who are, who are using those platforms, and, and the problem with those older pla platforms, if they're not maintained well, or maybe they're open source, which means they're free, but, uh, they're really not being maintained is that you know there can be all sorts of problems with features that don't work, um, security issues and and just in general they're clunky and, and not particularly uh, and, uh, enjoyable to use. So you know that's one factor that you need to look at um, and especially if you already have an e-commerce store and maybe you're using an old platform maybe it's time to upgrade. Um, also, there's a lot of free platforms which are great that are out there. I personally use WooCommerce, which is part of the WordPress CRM, C CMS. Um, and so it's, it's a great platform, very easy to use, a lot of third-party integrations and plugins to help add a lot of features to the store. But, um, and, and this is actually one of the reasons that uh, I wanted to do this video, yeah, you can ha run into problems where those, you know, all those, because it's free, all these things made by different people don't always talk to one another and you can actually run into problems. Um, you know, and I know I've spent, and I, you know, I'm obviously fairly technically proficient with this sort of thing and so I understand how to, but I ran into an issue where um, it had undone some work that um, I'd spent hours already doing and lost a bunch of data that was really valuable that I needed to, to have about um, the, the revenue the stores was actually making and that was purely just because two plugins weren't talking to each other or working well and so that actually caused a, a massive uh, issue that took time and was quite frustrating now if you're not tech savvy and you're not used to having a you know an online store that would have been probably frustrating to the point of uh, you know bringing you to tears um, so Free platforms are great and they can be really good, but as soon as it starts to get complex and you're adding in those third-party plugins, etc., it can really make it, um, you know, a, a bit of a minefield. And, and then you've got to, you know, unless you're tech savvy, yeah, you can run into issues. Um, we recommend Shopify and BigCommerce. There are plenty of other good platforms, paid platforms out there. They're a subscription-based service where you pay a monthly fee, um, and then essentially that. That platform is updated automatically, features at work, so all those third-party integrations I was talking about in WooCommerce that are free, they're already integrated in there. Sometimes you maybe have to pay for them, depending on what they are, but they work. And so you, you're not going to run into this issue of um, you know things not talking to one another, and if there is a problem, you've got somebody to reach out to and say, hey, I'm paying for this, can you please uh, look into this or give me some advice about it? So we recommend those um, two particular platforms and I uh, think they're very robust and powerful. And so, yeah, we'd really encourage you to um, build in a good system, um, shopping cart system, and also pay, you know, be realistic about the cost. Um, sure, you can get somebody to, who's a good web designer to maybe put a theme together, pop it into the store, add your logo, that kind of business, and then add products. But then there might not be features that you want uh, available. They may, you know, maybe it doesn't work well on mobile because of the way that they've designed. You know, there's all sorts of problems. So you need to, to spend the right amount of money getting that store set up from the get-go and getting it. Um, and so we, we think, you know, whereas you might pay $50,000 plus for a fit-out in, in, a, in a physical store, getting your website set up costs a fraction of that. You know, but you need to be realistic about paying uh, somebody to set that store up um, correctly from the get-go so it doesn't get frustrating and make you throw your hands up and go, this just doesn't work. Because it will work if you set it up properly. 
Number two, when you're adding products to this, the website, first of all, unique product descriptions. Now this is a two-fold um, benefit. One, it's gonna help you in search engines and organically. Now, 50 to 60% of your traffic will probably come via organic search traffic, okay? So you obviously want to rank highly for the terms that are relevant to your products that you've got on your web store. So that's one reason that you want unique product descriptions because if you've got them the same as um, you know, the manufacturer's website and then all the other people who are selling the same product have the same description, you're probably gonna find it really hard to rank um, above them. But if you have unique product descriptions, you have a much better chance. The second you know, face to that, that is that when you have unique product descriptions, hopefully, and what we advise you to do is make them much more helpful than say the manufacturer's descriptions or whatever everyone else is offering. So unique product descriptions that are helpful and answer questions that customers have about products. Um, you know, so if you've got frequently asked questions about products, put those up, put the answers to those up on, onto the product descriptions. Have lots of photos, obviously. Have a video that explains and shows the use of that product. Whatever's relevant. Um, obviously reviews on the page, um, you know, but mainly that, that product description has to be helpful because whereas you might be competing with, you know, a, a bunch of other stores, if your product description and your products are presented in such a way that it, somebody looks at them and goes, oh great, this has really answered all my questions I had about this, it's convinced me to purchase this product. Even if you're probably a little bit more expensive, if you build that trust factor by providing that kind of information, the chances are that you will not only get the, per get the sale, but you will probably have, um, you know, and if, that's, and, and if your product descriptions across the board are valuable and helpful, you'll probably also get um, the, um, the, the, you know, the, ref the return business as well and even referrals. So really make sure you have unique and descriptive, helpful product descriptions as you're adding those products. Number three, product images. So in the same vein as, as the product descriptions, you need good product images. Uh, so you can do that yourself if you've got the skills or you want to learn the skills, um, or get someone else to do those for you. Um, look, in the same way, a good product description, um, which obviously images are part of, builds trust, so do good photos. You know, dodgy, you know, poorly lit, uh, poorly edited, you know, photos can put people off and possibly lose you the sale. So you definitely need to factor that in when you're, um, when you, you know, when you're adding product. Obviously get those photos done either yourself, do them yourself and do them well, or get somebody in to do them. Uh, number four, internet marketing. Now look, this, this is a whole video in and of itself, but you definitely need SEO, okay? Like I said, 50 to 60% of your traffic will come via organic search, so mainly Google probably. So you obviously want to make sure that your products rank well in the search engines. Um, otherwise, you're just not gonna get the traffic. So that's really important. Uh, Google Shopping Ads. Obviously, if you're, um, you're, you're selling and you know, it's a brand new site, you may not have any ranking for your, for your products in, in search. So Google Shopping Ads are brilliant in that regard. Um, they are very cost effective too. So for a small investment, um, you can have your ads appear. And so just, you know, if you're not familiar with Google Shopping Ads, they're the ones that appear at the top of the search. You'll see the images and you'll see the product and you can click through and you can look at um, you know, that product on the website. So obviously very visually appealing and also um, quite cheap in, in reference to um, you know, getting your products in front of people for the relevant searches if you're not ranking already organically. Um, Google Dynamic Remarketing Ads, that's another one. It's a little bit tricky, but there essentially you look at a product and then that product follows you around to other websites and you can see that product appearing at different, uh, on different websites and so it reminds you about that product and, and hopefully uh, people go, oh yeah, that's right, I really actually want to purchase that. And I've been remarketed to myself, I know how it works and it is quite effective because it definitely, uh, if, you, if you want something, you've been to a website, you've looked at it and then you keep seeing it, you go, oh yeah, that's right, I need to, I need to look at getting that. Um, Facebook catalogue ads. Are another one, uh, so that's feeding your products through to Facebook uh, from your from your website. That's a you know one of those third-party uh, integrations that I've talked about 
previously, um, and so is Google Shopping Ads for that matter. Uh, and then you you can have an online store on Facebook, which then links through to your store. But you have all your products on there. You can advertise your products from uh, Facebook as well, which is really powerful. You can even do similar to the Google Dynamic remarketing ads. You can then show products to people um, that they have actually viewed on your website, and, and it's very powerful. So that's definitely one you should look into and cost effective. And then finally, email marketing. If you're not doing email marketing, um, you're missing out on a huge opportunity to convert people to sales. Email marketing, on average, we see uh, the conversion rates are like two to three times or more higher than organic traffic, paid traffic, paid search, or pay of Facebook ads. So email marketing is really important. Start gathering that database and start marketing to it on a regular, regular basis. Um, so there's five things to at least point out. But uh, obviously, you know, that could be, we could take a whole video to talk about all those aspects and more. And finally, point number five, videos. Um, video is something, particularly in Australia, that um, you know, not a lot of e-commerce stores are, are utilising. Not saying none of them are, but it's definitely not prominent and it's definitely something, a way you can get out ahead of your competition by starting to use video um, in your product descriptions, um, you know, just video in general to help enrich the experience, the user experience on your website. So definitely, we, um, you know, and the other thing is uh, that you obviously take those videos, you put them on YouTube, and now you have the opportunity to rank in the second largest search engine in the world. So not only are you trying to hit Google search, but you're also hitting YouTube, which is also another Google uh, product. So I uh, definitely recommend product videos, um, how-to videos, educational videos, all those sorts of things that work on YouTube, and I'm sure you've, you've uh, used YouTube for, for those sorts of things before yourself as well. As with photos, you can DIY it, um, or you can get someone in to do it. Um, if you're gonna DIY it, just make sure that the quality of the videos matches, the, I guess, the, the, the is on brand. Um, if you're selling luxury items and yet you're shooting a video in a poorly lit room on an iPhone and it's echoing around the room, probably not a good look. And so make sure that the quality of the videos aligns with, with your brand in that sense. So look, there's five tips. Um, we've kind of you know, gone over those fairly quickly. We're always happy to answer questions if you have them. Um, so please leave those in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And uh, look, thanks very much for watching.